Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to the Cricket Happening Show, uh, which is your usual Cricket Happening Show with your host Ram. Uh, well, in this particular Cricket Happening Show, well, we are going to look at the four days play uh, between Zimbabwe and Pakistan and now the four days play definitely belong to Pakistan and in the main it belonged to uh, the veteran uh, batsman from Pakistan, uh, Yunus Khan, who got a double century discredit and enabled and also they had an 88 run uh, last week at stand which was unbroken between Rahat Ali uh, who contributed a very valuable unbeaten 35, 40 balls with 3 fours and 3 sixes with some big hitting and that enabled Pakistan to declare the score at 419 for 9 and thus set Zimbabwe a target of 342 runs to win and at the end of the fourth day of the first test match Zimbabwe were 13 for 1 when they lost they lost a wicket in the last over of the day and that was stumps when Tino Mavoyo was uh, fooled by Dusra from Saeed Ajmal and he was trapped on the pads LBW bowled Saeed Ajmal for 2 and that was said Zimbabwe were 13 for 1 at close of play so that essentially means that they require another 329 runs to win on the morrow with 9 wickets I think it's going to be a Herculean task for them uh, the first thing that Zimbabwe would like to do is actually like to save the match so that they don't allow uh, Pakistan to do the match though the, that's the only way as far as Zimbabwean victory is concerned uh, that is something which is absolutely out of the equation because the ball is turning Saeed Ajmal has already star started um, started showing his um, uh, tricks here and uh, he would and he and Abdul Rahman are going to be very very difficult for Zimbabwean batsmen to handle well as far as uh, today's uh, um, game was concerned today was the fourth day's play Pakistan would resume at the overnight uh, score of 168 for four and there was immediate joy for Zimbabwe as um, Asad Shafiq uh, could not um, add to his overnight score of 15 when he was clean bowled by Chatara beautiful off cutter from Chatara and Asad Shafiq was absolutely um, uh, you know he was really surprised uh, by the pace that Chatara could generate and he knocked off the stumps and Chatara was absolutely jubilant as Asad Shafiq was bowled with Chatara for 15 with two fours and his immediate reward uh, made the score of Pakistan at 169 for 5 but after that it was there was absolutely no joy for Zimbabwe as uh, there was a big partnership in fact um, it was uh, a partnership uh, which yielded uh, almost uh, 70 odd runs uh, between Adnan Akmal and uh, Yunus Khan uh, as far as uh, Yunus Khan was concerned uh, well after the wicket of Asad Shafiq uh, they definitely decided to put down the shutters uh, and tried to play out time but after lunch they really really opened up with Yunus Khan also playing some beautiful strokes and also Adnan Akmal uh, complimenting, him, complimenting him very well by playing some attractive strokes he was sweeping well and also Yunus Khan as you know he's a good driver of the ball uh, he was uh, using the reverse sweep to the spinners he was using the orthodox uh, sweep shot to the spinners and also one of the shots that he played off his legs was a real beauty and Yunus Khan as you know he drives straight very well so in all he picked up lots of runs uh, through that particular area uh, where he went after the ballers and but what was good was that Yunus Khan uh, was a very very uh, you know a very uh, sensible playing by Yunus Khan uh, which uh, enabled um, Adnan Akmal to also prosper in the company of Yunus Khan and Adnan Akmal contributed 64 with 8 fours but before being run out in fact this partnership was ended when it was um, uh, he had actually uh, struck the ball to deep point and he had gone for a single uh, and then they were coming for the second run and Adnan Akmal was absolutely livid with Yunus Khan while he was given out run out uh, he was absolutely he knew he was out but you know it was a real misunderstanding uh, he was really really angry on Yunus Khan but he was really really angry while walking to the pavilion and rightly so but he contributed probably he might have sensed a century but definitely got his third um, half, uh, test half century uh, contributing 64 with 8 fours but after that um, Pakistan suddenly started losing some wickets after the wicket of Adnan Akmal uh, as uh, Abdul Rahman Prasparut Seya came in and picked up uh, three wickets um, uh, in quick succession uh, first he had Abdul Rahman LBW bowled Seya for 9 Saeed Ajmal was LBW bowled Seya for 1 and Junaid Khan was bowled out Seya for 8 uh, when he couldn't um, try to drive at the ball and he was clean bowled for 8 so that uh, suddenly uh, from a position where 287 for 6 suddenly the Pakistan score was looking at 331 for 9 and uh, it looked like uh, only 
Yunus Khan was the person who was there on 150 runs and Rahat Ali, the uh, number 11 batsman, came in. But um, as far as, so probably, you know, Pakistan, Zimbabwe, now this has been the problem for Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe have not been able to wrap it up and um, uh, that was the precise case today. Uh, they couldn't capitalize on that uh, after the ninth wicket had gone and they allowed the innings to really, really prosper to such an extent that Rahat Ali grew, grew in confidence and started slamming the ballers for fours and sixes and he was hitting it with pretty, pretty good ease and as far as Yunus Khan was concerned, uh, Yunus Khan uh, took his time but in the end, uh, because of the company that he got from Rahat Ali, in, in fact, initially Yunus Khan was shielding Rahat Ali a lot of times but uh, well, after that, uh, he got, started getting confidence in Rahat Ali as he was playing his strokes very well uh, and that enabled Yunus Khan uh, to compile uh, his uh, fourth test double century uh, truly deserved what a knock it was a saving knock I would say uh, Yunus Khan was not out on 200 with 15 fours and 3 sixes Rahat Ali was not out on 35 or 40 balls with 3 fours and 3 sixes and this pair had added 88 runs uh, for the uh, final wicket when Ms. Bawal Haq the Pakistan captain called the uh, players back um, and uh, Pakistan declared at 419 for 9 thus setting Zimbabwe a target uh, of um, of 342 to actually win the match. Now, uh, Chatara, 33-7, 99 runs and 2 wickets, but Panyangra, look at the balling figures of Panyangra. It doesn't look like a test match. 30 overs, 14 maidens, 42 runs and 2 wickets. It looked like a one-day balling analysis. Tremendous balling from Panyangra with lots of pace and lots of real variations in his balling. Prasper Chaya also bowled superbly, 37.3 overs, 5 maidens, 137 runs and 3 wickets. Shingirai Masakadza, 34 overs, 4 maidens, 100 runs and 1 wicket. And, uh, and Hamilton Masakadza, 15 overs, 5 maidens, none for 29. But one thing I would like to tell you, after the wicket of Hasid Shafiq, in fact Zimbabwe once again were very unlucky. Hamilton Masakadza brought himself on to bowl and he was dropped in the slips, which was uh, pretty sad. And after that uh, Zimbabwe got uh, seven overs to, um, 8 overs to his face and in those 8 overs they lost the wicket in the last over of the day when Tino Mowoye was LBW bowled Saeed Ajmal to a Dusra for 2 and that left Busi Sibanda not out on 5 and 13 for 1 was the final tally for Zimbabwe. So Zimbabwe tomorrow is going to have a very Herculean task of actually uh, saving the match I would say because they require under 329 runs with 9 wickets remaining but as I said it's going to be pretty tough. Uh, the ball is turning. Saeed Ajman and Abdul Rahman are going to definitely, definitely worry the New uh, Zimbabwean batsmen and they are not going to allow them any liberties. Uh, so, well, so other than that, uh, dear fans and subscribers, since I am really, really running short of time, I will have to end my cricket show. But uh, one thing very quickly before I go, I would like to say the New Zealand cricket team has been announced uh, for the tour of Bangladesh, uh, which is going to be uh, three One Day Internationals and uh, 2020s after the test matches. And the uh, new inclusions are there is a player by the name uh, Ish Sodhi. Now Ish Sodhi is a, a, a leg spin baller. He played against India A and he performed well uh, in, against uh, when New Zealand A uh, played against India A. So he has been selected in the team. So he's a new face. And then all rounder Corey Anderson, one would have remembered, he pr played in the Champions League and he also scored a very a wonderful century against the India A team when New Zealand A were batting, uh, were playing against India A. So he has also got the nod. So well, dear fans and subscribers, as I said, I am really, really short of time nowadays. Uh, but I know I make it a habit to do this cricket happening show as this is known as the daily cricket show from your host Ram, cricket happening. So I keep up my promise here. Uh, but I am sorry, I am not able to go into much greater details. But yes, uh, tomorrow, as you know, Saturday always it's a late match report. But you'll definitely see me with the final day's report. And as I said, Zimbabwe could, uh, the only option available for Zimbabwe is to save the match. But again, I, I think it's likely it's going to be very, very impossible for them to do so um, because Pakistani ballers will be breathing down their necks. Well, that's it from me, your host, Ram, for the cricket show for today. See you all tomorrow. Until then, it's goodbye. Thank you.